It's not going to be built in silos. Each investment made for an infrastructure will assess for itself even before it is launched about what will be the optimum outcome that we can plan by having a synergy between every mode of transport, linkage with the logistics, making sure that those capacities which exist, whether it is in the form of uh, our endowments, natural endowments, or in the form of enterprise having its capacity for manufacturing or for servicing, and ensuring that the products that are being manufactured would reach their destination, be within this country or outside. So they are not going to be a manufacturing zone built in silo somewhere, unconnected with proper railhead or access to a port. They are not going to be inland waterways which are going to lie without being utilized because they are more cost effective than even the road. They are not going to be ports which are sitting and looking for a day when good ships would come, good liners would reach with cargoes that will be closer to the hinterland. All this is going to be kept in mind and understanding the length and breadth of this country, economic corridors are going to be built, logistic <coughs> hubs are going to be built so that you are going to have interconnectivity with all of them. Am I saying something new? Yes. Infrastructure was built in this country. Since the time 1947 we had our independence, huge dams were built, temples of democracy they were called, no doubt. But where did we run or fall short? We fell short because they were standing on their own. And then when development started reaching, we re realized that they had no connection with either the raw material supplying points or the nearest ports. So the logistics cost became too much, raw material cost became too much, and end of the day you probably didn't even have skilled workers in and around that area. So that is the kind of disconnect that I highlight when I'm saying PM Gati Shakti will guide us. And when it guides us, these kinds of anomalies won't exist, where investments happen private and public, but doesn't maximize returns. We need to get over these kind of disconnects. And that is why Prime Minister has come up with this PM Gati Shakti, where all these factors would be analyzed, assessed, much before we get in somewhere. And now, for those which exist without that kind of connectivity, we will bring those connectivity, we will not forget them, but we'll have to bring them up to that stature. So that's the major exercise that we'll have to do for the next 25 years for us to reach India at 100, that India which all of us can be proud about. That India where your investment don't go waste, that India where your work, your entrepreneurial abilities don't lie underutilized. We need to use it all up to the optimum level. So if that marks one of the rail, the other rail is that new opportunity, the innovation, the startups, the sunrise sectors, the transition towards green energy, the promise that has been made in COP26 for which we have to work, not because it's a promise there, but it is truly for India to have a sustainable growth, not being only dependent on imported fuel. We need to have renewable energy strengthening us. We need to have such infrastructure in sunrise sectors which will help us to give that traction for our aspirations. We need to have our young coming up with wonderful ideas. That's what they've showed, that within a matter of seven months, eight months, so many such stand-ups could become unicorns. And the money didn't come from somewhere else. It was all Indian money. Indian private equity, Indian venture capital have funded all of them. How was that possible? The ideas were worthy. Money was there. You wanted to utilize them and make the best of it. Hasn't it benefited the startups? Hasn't it benefited young? And hasn't it given you assured good returns for investing in these young minds? 
that's the kind of new India which is getting built up. And that's the kind of new India which looks at if government can just be facilitator rather than be making our lives difficult. So when Prime Minister repeatedly talks about ease of doing business, they are not just jargons. We have shown that in the last seven, eight years, we've removed somewhere near 1,418 old deadwood laws. Compliances, about which even the Prime Minister was talking now in the Lok Sabha. Compliances have been made easy. These are not done for the record's sake. It will show on the ground. It's going to influence everything that you and the next generations which are aspiring to do business will benefit from. So the two tracks that have been laid for the Amritkal, Amritkal meaning the next 25 years leading towards India, 100. So this is the opportunity that the budget highlights. It is also one of those budgets where we are reiterating the policy prescription given in the last budget, committing ourselves to certain levels of privatization, giving a core policy on privatization where all sections, all sectors are open for private sector. However, the government will be present in those strategic sectors, at least at the bare minimum level. We give a commitment for that. We'll continue with that. We also give a commitment about the policy that we will look at India's economic revival post the pandemic through the public funding of infrastructure. The investments which will happen in infrastructure is being heavy lifted by the public sector, by the government. And that is why this time the capex has gone up to seven and a half lakh crores, a 35% increase. Earlier in the last budget it was a 34% increase, now even more, from 5.5 lakh crores to 7.5 lakh crores. And here it is not just the center. We've giving, we are giving from this seven, lakh, seven and a half lakh crores one lakh to the one lakh crores to the states as interest-free 50-year loan so that state governments can have that resource in their hand through which they can speed up spending on infrastructure. So it is an approach where the centre and the states are doing together the same thing. So this emphasis on infra, on public investment in infra, is done after quite a lot of consideration and discussion with the stakeholders. And we have done a bit of analysis, and this is only going to result in crowding in of the private investments. And private investments are nowhere else but here, before me. And I would think this is the opportune time for private investments to come in expand your capacities, build new capacities. The corporate tax rate has been reduced much before the pandemic itself. Nobody knew pandemic at that time. And I would honestly appeal to you that do not let this opportunity go away. Not just us, but globally too. The assessment by normally very discerning investors, discerning financial sector watchers, observers, is that India will be the fastest growing economy this year and the next year. They don't speak about years after that. And if India shall be the fastest growing economy among the large economies, I'm sure it will also be because you have come forward. I'm sure it's also going to be because India as a team, government and the private, will have to work together and because you are ready for it. It just cannot be just the government doing it. So I would take this occasion and not give a too long a opening remark, but I would invite you to see the consistency through the budget, predictability through the budget, 
transparency through the budget and nothing which is not in the budget exists outside of it. Everything that has to be said by the government in its financial statement is out there for you to see out there last year, out there this year as well. So I would invite all of you all to do your maximum best, come out, join the Team India and ensure that India is indeed the fastest growing economy this year, next year and the several years afterwards. Thank you very much.